we know part of numbers. Typically, the most important part here is the notation, repetition indices, repeated indices, Einstein, Einstein notation. Okay, that's the most important part that keep in mind. Okay, so now let's talk about operations, about tensors, so operations with tensors. For instance, vector. Vectors are order, what order? What tensor order is one vector, has one vector? What is the order of one vector? Remember? What? One. one. So order one tensor, just all vectors. And you already know because it was that, because you have really worked with that and you know how to sum to it. Huh? We have one vector A, one vector B, we have the Drumbus, Drumbus uh, rule for summing them. And, and we obtain the sum vector, which is C. And if you want to subtract, just we sum the opposite of B. So if you want to subtract B from A, just we consider minus B, and then we apply the rule to A and to minus B, and we obtain this vector. In terms of components, all these vectors, in a certain basis, have, if they are tensors, they have components. How many components has a vector? How many? How many components? has a vector. Three. Three. Okay, three. So every of these components, the component of the, of the sum, is the corresponding sum of every component. That's the rule. So you write to, comp to see what is the first component of C being the sum of A plus B, which is the same as B plus A, a is just summing the first component or the component I of A and the component I of B. And for subtracting the same. The component of the subtract of the of the uh, the resulting vector from subtracting B from A is just considering the for component of A, min I of A, minus the component I of B. So that's something that you already know. To subtract two components, just subtract, to subtract two vectors, or to sum two vectors, just sum the corresponding components. Okay. Then, another operation that we, that we can do is just given a vector, multiply it times scale. To multiply it as a scalar, the rule is that every component of the original vector gets multiplied by the, 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 the scalar that we multiply by. So that is the result. The component i of the product is just the component i of the original vector multiplied times the scalar. Probably you already know that. Okay? That is the what we call the uh, compact uh, equation, in which we say the full vector in terms of the basis that we are using. So this expression gives the same result whatever the basis is. If we change the basis, the component will be changed, but that would be the, the result would be the same. This is the initial expression of that, saying that in a certain basis, the components, what is the component i of the, of the result? That's, uh, that's equivalent expression. That is an initial expression. That is the compact expression. We'll see. We'll see that uh, uh, along, along the book, along the vectors. Another all the operations that we can do with vectors, the scalar product of two vectors. So if we have vector u and a vector b, and we want to multiply to do the scalar, also called the dot product, is just denoted by inserting a pole, a dot, a dot, that's why it's called dot product, inserting a dot in between. That is the way of, of that we we'll have to represent the scalar product. And you already know that, no? So for, for doing that, you remember really from your secondary lessons of algebra, um, that we have to multiply the norm, the absolute value, the length of the first vector times the norm absolute value of the second vector, multiply by the cosinus of what angle, which is the angle which is made by two vectors. Remember it? So that's the original definition. Well, this definition has some properties. So in index notation, we can say that this product would be the result of doing the dot product of uh, the first vector which we now expressed in index notation as ui ei, that means that there is a summation here, so like in here, right? There's a summation, 
a summation here that is the expression of vector i, u, sorry, and the expression of vector b. Sorry for this, that should be different. Okay. So there now we just group that u e b j and then the dot product remains remains on the basis a i a j. So here what we have is the dot product, the scalar product of element of, of different combinations of elements of the basis, right? But look, an orthogonal basis, since the bases are orthogonal to each other, the elements of the basis are orthogonal. So the scalar product, the dot product of one vector times the other is the norm of the first one, the norm of the second one, times the cosine sinus of the angle. The, what, what is the cosine of pi over two? One, Z sorry, zero. So this dot product is one for i equal j or zero for i different from j. So the product of one vector times itself is just one because the angle is zero and the product times another one of the basis is zero. So look, now we can simplify that. That's not something that we introduced before, saying that that product of the ele elements of a Cartesian basi basis is, can be expressed delta ij. That means that when i is equal to j is equal to one, when i is different from j is equal to zero. Okay? So let's apply that here, in that operation that we did here. Okay, so now we have ai times aj. So this is delta ij. Delta ij. So we have ui, B, uh, bj, and that product, which is delta ij. And then that product is just different for zero. That involves a number of symmetries, right? A number of symmetries, so nine sums. But look, due to the specific properties of delta, which is zero of if i equal j, and uh, uh, if i different from j, it's only different from zero when i is equal to j. In that case, it take, takes one. So, all, all, all of all these nine terms, there is only one which is different from zero, which is that one in which i is equal to j. So, u i v i. And it's multiplied by delta i i, which is one. So, then from that, that's an operation that we have done very fast accounting or taking into account the in the in, uh, Einstein uh, rule, that is just written in that way. Look, that way, that, that expression is an expression that is a symmetry because there is a repeated index here. So it's u1, v1, plus u2, v2, plus u3, v3. Okay? So what does that mean? That if I know the components of u, u1, v2, v3, and I know the components of v, v1, v2, v3, we can do the dot product in that way, computing the norm of u, the norm of v, and the angle of this operation, or just we can do this operation, multiply the first component of i of u times the first component of b, the second component of i times the second component of b, the third component of i and the third component of b, and then it's only that. That's the way. That's the one that we mostly use. And by the way, we'll go back to that. Using matrix products, have you ever worked with matrices? I think so. No. You know how to do a matrix, a, pro a matrix product, okay? So that is just the product of the transposed components matrix of u. So the vector of the, 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 the components matrix of u is a vector column, okay? If we transpose that, is a column is a row vector. Multiply by the components of b. And we do the matrix operation, we, we see that this is the same, the, the, the operation here. So here we have provided three different ways of computing the dot product of two vectors. Either this one, which is the original one, the second one, which is that one, and the matrix form, which is multiplying two matrices, the transposed of u, the row column of the components of u, times the, uh, the row vector, sorry, of, uh, of the, of the components of u times the column vector of the components of b. Use whatever it's more convenient in every case. In terms of the scalar dot uh, product of two of vectors, we can compute also the norm of a vector, which is that, that, and this means the same. So, so to speak, the length vector, okay? 
and the norm of the vector, which is the product of u times u. When v is equal to u, we can multiply a vector u times itself. What is the angle in that case? Zero. What is the cosinus? One. So that is the square root of the length. Okay? The length of the vector is the, uh, uh, sorry, that's the, the, the square of the length. So the norm, norm of u, is the square root of the product of one vector, that product itself. That's what we call, and then of course, is the square root of, in that case, ui times ui. That's the way you express it, the vector, the, the norm. Then, the square norm, of course, is the square of that, so it's ui times ui. So far, let's go ahead. Some properties. These properties, I mean, have to be sometime, somehow uh, inside of you. So probably you know that multiplying two vectors doesn't, is not affected by the order. So u times v is equal to b times u. If you multiply times the vector zero, it takes zero. That's very easy to prove. Then, it's very important, the linear operator. If you multiply one vector by the two linear combinations of two other vectors, that can be alpha, the first co uh, factor com of the combination, times the product of ub, plus beta times the, the dot product of uw. Okay? So that's the linear property. The product of, uh, the, the, the product of a vector times itself, which is the norm, the length, it's always uh, greater than zero if the vector is different from zero. Only zero when the, ve the vector is zero. And by the way, if two, pro uh, two vectors have a dot product which is zero, that means the two vectors are orthogonal to each other. Because in that case, by resorting to, to that definition, then we see that the, if, this, if, if this is zero, that means that the cosinus angle is zero, so the angle is pi over two. Okay. Next operation that you are familiar with too. Vector product, also called cross product. Why it's called cross product? This was called dot product because it's denoted by a dot between the two products. Okay? This is called the cross product because it's uh, in between, it to denote it, we place a cross. Okay? Uh, the vector product of two vectors is another vector. Is another vector. And you know the rule, right? If we have vector A and vector B, and you want to obtain the product, that the, the product is another vector C, which is orthogonal to the plane made by A and B, so orthogonal to both of them. And then the, the, the modulus of the length of this product is the modulus of the first, the norm of the first, times the norm of the second, times the sinus, not the cosinus, of the angle made by, by the two, okay? And the sense is that that is obtained by the right-hand uh, rule or the screw, the, 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 um, the, um, the, the, the right-hand rule, that one that going from A to B and following the corpus screw of law, you, you obtain C, okay? So in that case, moving from A to B, if I do, yeah, if I follow the corkscrew, the, the uh, law, then I see C, which is the problem. Okay, so uh, in index notation, well, this, and I'm not going to show that, this can be also uh, done in index notation using that permutation index that we have just defined. So the component i, the component i of this vector. So that is a vector but that has three components. There is C1, C2, C3, in the basis that they are using. Can be expressed as this expression here, in which we have used the permutation symbol. Okay? A, I, J, K, A, J, B, K, B, K. Sorry. So that means that uh, this is an expression, a monomial, in which the repeated indices are J and K. So they are in summatories here. It's here we sum, a, we sum in J and we sum in K. And the resulting term depends on I. I is a talking index. That's why it's a vector. 
If there is no talking in text, that would be what that would be. If there is no talking in text, eh? Pascal. So this is a vector, and this, of course, this. I mean, if we just develop that expression, there are nine terms, okay, for every i. So it would be very long. But in that way, it's a very condensed way. That, that you see the usefulness of this uh, permutation uh, operator here, because it allows expressing a quite complex operation just by using, I mean, some symbols that we have defined, typically this operator. So anyway, we can develop it. And we see that the first component, the one multiplying E1, the first component of the vector, is, look, if I is equal to one to express the first component, so this term will be only different for J, K being different themselves from I and from each other. So there are only two, three, one, two, three. For E, one, two, three, the result of that is one. So that would be A2, B3. And then the other one would be one, three, two, which would be negative. And that would be three, two here, minus A3, B2. So this is the expression that we obtain by doing these nine uh, op operations here, these nine sums here. But only two of them are different, resulting in these two. The first component, C1, is A2 being the, A2 being the second component of A, B3 being the, the third component of B, A2, B3 minus A3, B2, OK? And in the same rule, it can be proven that the second component is A3, B1 minus A1, B3, A2, B2 minus A2, B1. We have it here, OK? Another interesting way of doing this product is a symbolic. We'll also use sometimes symbolic, which is that Sometimes you are doing mathematical crimes, something that the mathematician would not accept, maybe. But symbolic, as engineers, we can do that. For instance, imagine that we place a sort of matrix, the symbolic matrix, because it's not a matrix. Why is not a matrix? Because these here are not numbers, are vectors. Okay? But imagine that you write this symbolic matrix in which the first row is just the three elements of the basis. E1, 2, E3. And here we, per, we place in a row uh, four the first, the, the three components of vector A, and here the three components of vector B. And now let's do the determinant of this, following the rules of the determinant. Okay? Maybe you remember the rules of the determinant, but there is a way of doing determinant which is development by draws or development by columns. For instance, I can develop by rows and have one term, which is this term, multiplied by the determin determinant of this adjoint, uh, determin adjoint uh, matrix, which is A2B3 minus A3B2. So that's the first term. And then the second term is that E2, multiplied by the determinant of this, this, and this the, uh, components. So that would be A3B1 minus A1B3 and the third one. So, to remember this formula, if you are familiar of, with the obtention of the determinant, symbolically you can resort, sorry, you can resort to this expression. Otherwise, you can resort also to this one, or you can just resort to the developed expression. This is a comp compact expression of the dot product, the vector product of A and B. This is the index expression and this is a symbolic expression of this process, everything is. Okay?